Psalm 144, verse 1. Blessed be the Lord my strength, which teacheth my hands to war, and my fingers to fight, my goodness and my fortress, my high tower and my deliverer, my shield and he in whom I trust, who subdued my people under me. Lord, what is man that thou takest knowledge of him, or the Son of Man, that thou makest account of him. Man is light to vanity. His days are as a shadow that passeth away. Bow thy heavens, O Lord, and come down and touch the mountains, and they shall smoke. Cast forth lightning and scatter them. Shoot out thine arrows and destroy them. Send thine hand from above. Rid me, deliver me out of great waters from the hand of strange children, whose mouth speaketh vanity, and their right hand is a right hand of falsehood. I will sing a new song unto thee, O God, upon a psaltery and an instrument of ten strings, and I will sing praises unto thee. It is he that giveth salvation unto kings, who delivereth David his servant from the hurtful sword. It is He, our God, our Jesus, our Savior, our Redeemer, who gives us salvation, and He delivers us from all sin, all plots and plans of the wicked one that tries to destroy us. Amen. I was waking up um, early this morning again. I woke up this uh, early this morning, and I was thinking about this very uh, verse right here that he teacheth my hands to war and fingers to fight and as I was getting ready for work um, busy you know in my morning routines I checked my uh, messengers and my beautiful sister Monica Monica I love you you're such a blessing in my life in this season where I'm just always up and running out the door so very busy have very little time to um dig into the word um i listen to it uh, on audio um but you know there's really no uh, solid hours that i could soak in it just because of my busy life right now with work and everything so i'm on my way to work in a bit um but thank you for sending this awesome word i'm like oh my gosh it is so powerful i must share it um many of you might not know but my name Latkina, my cambodian name Latkina, is also a thai name and the root word uh is from Latkina. Latkina, um in my language in cambodian uh, means and there's more to it than just this, but from what I understand of it, it means um, uh, virtuous, to be complete, uh, of highest um, class, highest standard, highest statutes, to be complete in virtues. Um, so I asked my mom, who named me that, my dad or her? And I think her answer was like they both came up with it. So my name, Lekina. It's from the root word Latkina in Cambodia. Um, it's high standards, highest of virtues to be complete in virtues. Now, if you read my testimony and has heard my testimony, I grew up with no virtues. I was lost, destitute, the worst of sinners, and I was everything but virtuous. But praise God. Through his shed blood, he's redeemed me. And because of his death, he has purchased me and he's purchased you, amen, from the grips of Satan, the kingdom of darkness, and transferred us into the kingdom of light. And he has restored us and continually restoring us and changing us, molding us, making us into his image as he put his essence in us, his spirit, amen, the fruit of the spirit, his beauty, his virtues, his truth, his essence, his righteousness in us, restoring us back to who he has created us to be in his image after his likeness, for we are his offspring, amen. In him we move and have our beings, according to the book of Acts. So we are like our father, 
and every day from glory to glory, He will continue to change us into His image because He desires to see His reflection in us, in His born again children whom Christ redeemed with His blood. Amen. So let me bring this powerful word to encourage all of us. I'm going to read it quick because I need to go. Um, Beloved, it is yours. Rise up, my my women of valor and truth. That's you. If you're watching this, whether you're a man or a woman, you are a man of valor and truth. You are a woman of valor and truth. If you have the Spirit of God inside of you, the Spirit of truth and righteousness, amen, you have the kingdom of God inside of you. So this word is for you. Over the years, God has taught me over and over about obedience to Him and not man. So years ago, when Lord of the Rings came out as a movie, despite the author, um, J.R.R. Tolkien, was supposed to be a Christian, the Lord would not allow me to watch, listen to it, or even read the books. It wasn't until the last installment of the trilogy Return of the King, I love this title, was going to come to the theaters that he told me I could watch it. I'm like, great, but I don't have a clue what it's about. So he told me to rent the videos, which I did, and I watched the first two parts at home. Oh, I forgot to mention the name of the author, Beverly Jules Gard Fisher. This was posted October 5th, 2018. So... This is a timely word for us, the children of God, uh, the women of God. Amen. Um, Even the sons of God, because truth is truth and it's for all of us. Truth has no gender. All right. So while I watched them, the Holy Spirit was consistently sharing with me, explaining the correlation between the Lord of the Rings and the way God saw things. So as I watched, I was also stopping, rewinding, watching again, and taking notes to better understand what he was sharing. It was a real eye-opener. God will use whoever and whatever he wants to accomplish his purposes. This is so very true. So very true. Nothing is wasted. God will use anything and anyone, including that donkey, amen, and the whale that swallowed up Noah, amen. The Holy Spirit was manifesting throughout both videos, so we had lots of fun. But with Holy Spirit manifesting, I wasn't so sure about going to the final installment at the theater. God told me not to worry that He was in control, so I went with friends. Holy Spirit manifested again throughout the movie and shared throughout the movie correlating events, characters, etc., to the way he saw it. Do you know that God will use a movie, a film to speak to our hearts? That's what he did with me when I was in the Thailand refugee camps when I was about seven years old, broken, destitute, hopeless, so very sorrowful, so very sad because I had just lost my homeland, both of my parents. I was an orphan. I had nothing to hope in. I was just destitute and hopeless and despair. And, um, The missionaries played um, the movie of Jesus Christ, our Savior, hanging on the cross on this huge white screen. And um, as I peered into the face of Jesus, the sorrowful, sad, broken state and face of our Lord Jesus Christ with thorns on his head, blood dripping everywhere, his eyes was looking out on that movie screen and I looked into his eyes and the Holy Spirit communicated his love and um, his goodness and spoke to my heart and put it in my heart as an orphan, broken, destitute child that I could trust in him because he too understood my pain and suffering at that time. He understood he was abandoned, he was rejected, he was hated, he was poor. He knew the depth, the height, the intensity of the pain because he has suffered it. And so I was able to trust in our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ as he hung on that cross. 
God used that film to speak to me, to draw my heart to Him that day. I'll never forget it. God will use anything, anyone, as He chooses to bring about His purposes in our lives for our good and for His honor and glory. Amen. So, manifestations were generally during noisy parts of the movie. So, God did indeed take care of me through it, throughout it. Throughout it. I can't read this morning. Hallelujah. Earlier today, I was texted a word on HKP given through Veronica West regarding George Soros. Soros and the whirlwind of Elijah in America. When I heard the word given through Veronica, I suddenly saw L-O-T-R, Return of the King. Lord of the Ring, that's L-O-T-R. Return of the King again, and I saw George Soros as the evil witch king confronting Eowyn. Owen? Eowyn? I don't know how to say that name. The niece of the King of Rohan. She was dressed as a soldier, knight in armor, and the witch king was ready to kill her. He boasted that according to the legend prophecy that no man would destroy him, the witch king. I'm sure in his pride he thought she was crazy. But Owen knew the legend, prophecy, and she valiantly took off her helmet and said, But I am not a man. Hallelujah. And destroyed him. I didn't see this movie, but um, now I want to see it. As this was shown before me, I felt strongly that Owen was a picture of the women in this season. The women of God who are being called by God to rise up, to become the warriors, and to to come forth into the calling God has on their lives in this season amen that's you and me we must arise in this hour just as (laughs) owen i'm sure i'm saying her name wrong wanted to fight beside the men and people she loved so are the women called to fight beside the men and people they love our family our spouse our children our lost loved ones we must intercede in every day make intercession for their souls as Jesus Christ, our high priest, our intercessor, who's making daily intercessions upon our lives. We must follow his examples, amen, and um, imitate Christ and do the same for our lost loved ones and our nation, our community, and our churches, amen. Because women are who they are, they do not always fight the same as men. I believe that this is part of what the Lord is counting on to use against the enemy in the days ahead. Women are oftentimes looked on as weaker, which the enemy loves weaknesses, but God looks on our weaknesses as our strengths. Amen. There are strategies and techniques that women know and use, sometimes without thinking, because that is who they are in the Lord. Therefore, to keep me from becoming overly proud, I was giving a thorn in my flesh, a messenger from the adversary, to pound away at me so that I wouldn't grow conceited. Three times I begged the Lord to take this thing away from me, but he told me, My grace is enough for you, for my power is brought to perfection in weakness. Therefore, I am very happy to boast about my weaknesses in order that the Messiah's power will rest upon me. Yes, I am well pleased with weaknesses, insults, hardships, persecutions, and difficulties endured on behalf of the Messiah. For it is written, For it is when I am weak that I am strong. That's 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7 through 10 from the, I think, contemporary Um, CJB, I'm not sure what version that is. Um, So the Lord began speaking to me and said, My daughter, yes, I am calling forth my women in this hour that you would rise up, rise up, and rise up. Amen? For it is my time and season for my secret, secret weapon to come forth. The enemy has thought for thousands of years that he could keep you down. But it is I am who is calling you forth out of the shadows, out of the ditches, 
out of the hidden places where I have put you, where you have put yourself. Cultural ideas, themes, traditions, misunderstandings of my word, and wrong interpretations have kept you down. When I was a little girl in the Thailand refugee camps, I saw this woman who was wailing in such deep agonizing pain. She was crying like she was dying. It was so horrible. And so I asked my grandmother, I'm like, what is wrong with her? And uh, my grandma was like, was telling me that her husband betrayed her and um, was having a, a other relationship he was committing adultery against her and so she was dying like she was crying and wailing in such pain and um and i think she was like cursing the other woman whoever he cheated with and i pondered and watched all that and i was like why is she wanting to beat up the other woman you know if anything uh you know beat up her husband, kill him. He's the one that caused it, you know? This is what I was thinking when I was about seven. And also, my grandmother told me that this is just a part of life, honey. We're women, you know, men can do whatever they want, but we have no options but to endure. And I thought to myself, I'm like, oh, oh no, I am not going to endure that. I am not going to put up with that. I will chop up that man into pieces and feed him to the dogs. So this is how feisty and fierce and ruthless I was before Christ got a hold of me. <laughs> so there's a lot of men that are alive that should be dead. <laughs> Praise Jesus. <laughs> My goodness I'm not kidding I'm not behind bars because Christ interceded upon my life hallelujah anyways moving right along but that is the lies of the devil we were not created to be misused to be um, uh, treated like um, trash and to to be abused in any way shape or form do not accept that lie amen oh I could, man, I could speak forever on this topic. But when I created you as a partner to my beloved, you were not to be under his seat, but beside his seat. We are the bride of Christ. Jesus, our Jesus, our bridegroom. According to the book of Isaiah, the Lord, thy maker is your husband. Amen. And he did not create us to be under his feet. Hallelujah. But besides, beside his seat, that's why I took you from his rib to be beside him. For the two of you are to be together as one. So I'm calling you forth at this time and this hour. I'm calling you forth to rise up as the women of God, the women warriors that have been subdued, sat on, kicked, discouraged, and oppressed in many ways. No more. Amen. Not always intentionally, for there have been many misunderstandings between my people and me. Then God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the person, and while he was sleeping, he took one of his ribs and closed up the place from which he took it with flesh, the rib which Adonai, God, had taken from the person, talking about Adam, uh, he made a woman person. And he brought her to the man person. The man person said, At last, this is bone from my bones and flesh from my flesh. She is to be called woman, Hebrew for Ishar. Because she was taken out of man, Hebrew, Ish. This is why a man is to leave his father and mother and stick with his wife. And they are to be one flesh. Genesis 2, 21, 24, a quick word. If you're a man, you're watching this and you're married and um, you have never left your mom and you've always exalted your mother over your wife, it will never be healthy. It will never work out. I've seen this over and over. And it's happened so many times, including... I won't go there. Anyways, so even as I begin to pour out the revelation of my word that you would more fully understand me it is the time and the season for my women to rise up it's our time and season for us women to rise up women of valor women of truth amen 
sons and daughters of God, it's our time to rise up. Many of you have lived holy, holy, holy lives to me. Faithful and true, faithful and true, faithful and true are my women of valor and true truth. Are you faithful and true to Jesus, who is faithful and true to us? We must be. Amen. He is worthy. For you follow me oftentimes without question. It is the time and season for you to rise up. Valor, synonyms means courage, heroism, bravery, spirit, nerve, fearlessness, boldness, and gallantry. I'm not sure if I'm saying that word right either. Truth synonyms means fact, reality, certainty, accuracy, genuineness, precision, exactness, and legitimacy. Do not fear the days ahead, for I, the Lord your God, am with you in all things. Be sure to be obedient. Amen. If you love me, you will obey my command. For the enemy is looking for holes in your armor. He's looking for a way in to destroy you and your family. This is a very sobering warning because I know it is so true. The enemy works over time, always trying to get into my life, my weaknesses, or my husband. Any weaknesses, anywhere, he'll try to come in and try to destroy our family. So this is why it's imperative that we put on the whole armor of God, pray in the spirit without ceasing, giving thanks and our petitions made known to the Lord. Amen. We must put on our whole armor and be wise as serpents. Amen. He fears greatly the power of the women that I'm calling forth, for you are an obedient lot, as they say, and he he fears that most in you. Satan cannot do anything against an obedient child of God. Amen. Because God watches over his word His people who obeys and keeps his covenant, he'll accomplish his word over us. We must walk out the word of God. Amen. For he knows with your obedience, I will not deny you. For it is even as you are obedient that you continue to move forward. Amen. It is when he traps you in disobedience in any way that you slide backwards or off my path. Right now in this season, I have to guard my heart against bitterness, against coldness, coldness in my heart towards uh, my beloved. Uh, I have to guard my spirit, my soul, um, because I can be easily detached in off my own little world and I cannot do that. So please uh, keep me in your prayers in this area. Thank you. I say to you, that it is so important for you to continue to develop and fine-tune your relationship with me through time with me. This is something that we cannot forsake. While we're driving to work, while we're cooking, while we're in the bathroom, um, whatever it is that we're doing, we must continually be in intimate fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Converse, speak, pray, praise, amen, Um, nonstop. For in the days ahead, this will be so important that your life and the life of those you love will depend on it. Amen. Do not give up nor give in, for I the Lord am God and I am on your side. Again I say, follow me with all your heart. Believe in me with everything in you. Yes, Lord. Trust me like you never have before. Obedience is key in the days ahead. Thus says the Lord. Amen. What a beautiful word. This is by Beverly Jules Gard Fisher. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you, Monica, for sharing this beautiful, powerful, timely word. God bless you all for watching this, listening to this. Let us be obedient to the voice of our Master, our Lord, our Savior, our God, our King, our Redeemer, who alone is worthy. Amen. I'm going to work now. God bless you guys. I love you all.